All right. Playing with the RS918 again. The MCHF clone, as it's also known. Although there is much debate about the legality of this unit, this very unit right here. That's fine. That's a, I'll leave that up to everybody, all the viewers, to decide for themselves. I bought this unit before I understood any of that uh, controversy. And um, at the time I thought it was an open source project. And uh, But anyway, I'm going to make continue to make these videos because... Um, there is a lot of interest, and I think the MCHF or the the make the original maker should benefit greatly from this design. It's a fantastic design, and so um, I wish him the best. Um, hopefully, somebody can give him some guidance on getting this uh, project to a the next level. And really getting it out there in a um, in a form that people um, would lay down their money for. And uh, what I wanted was a completed machine. I had no interest in building a kit that would eventually look up, end up looking like Frankenstein with no case and no real knobs. So. Take that at face value. Well, there it is. Um, so here I am. I'm actually transmitting right now. I am um, trying some whisper today. WSPR mode, which is not a QSO per se. It's a beacon mode, basically, where I am transmitting out a very low power, two minute long digitally encoded um, uh, info packet which is then um, get uh, received by many others and wsprnet.org is where I can go and look at the results so I send out a two minute long beacon um, again very low power and uh, just basically it is a package that sends my the, the amount of power I'm running, um, my location using uh, Maidenhead grid square coordinates. And uh, nobody responds to these. They just report them through the internet that um, they may have received. And so um, with Whisper, you generally transmit you know, once every, I don't know, couple of minutes or uh, several minutes, probably you transmit, pr I'm transmitting, I believe, at about 20% of the cycles that go along, and each one is two minutes long. So, uh, and then the other time is spent listening on the frequency and reporting uh, reception to those users that I have received their uh, uh, data package so to speak so um, here's my results so far I'm still transmitting you see the TX light there I'm still transmitting this particular sequence um, up here is on my screen my latest receive um, data bands are not good today I'm on the 20 meter band so far I've had some luck let me just zoom in here uh, reaching you know the far reaches of the US from my location near Toronto and that's fairly typical you know I do really well on the west coast with my 
particular antenna setup that I'm using right now, which is a uh, vertical, 31 foot vertical with a 9 to 1 un un, no radials. Uh, the coax lying on the ground is my uh, counterpoise, and so I have about 50 feet of feed line that is basically on the ground, comes in my basement window here and feeds the shack. Still transmitting. Let me come back to this. I'm receiving right now. And you probably don't hear much. Signals are there though, and they might be below the noise floor level. And that's fine. Whisper is able to pick out signals, much like FT8, below the noise floor level. And so, um, the computer is hearing it, even though I can't hear it, or you can't hear it. Radio here reminds me of my old uh, KX3 and the way it kind of sits on the desk here. Uh, KX3 is obviously a, uh, probably a much finer radio. But um, this thing has the visual bells and whistles. Um, uh, so here is the uh, antenna connection. I, I'm using an angle connector. One single USB cable to do all of the cat and the audio in both directions. That is a nice feature. And power. So that is it to uh, connect this. I think my KX3 required, you know, audio in, audio out, cables. It was, when you got it all set up for uh, digital, it was kind of a big spaghetti mess of cables. So I didn't own that radio very long. I just didn't enjoy it. Um, anyway, 